I'm visiting my friend Steve here in Bermuda. Last night we went to an open mic night and performed improv. No one is familiar with improv on this island, so we got some heckling. But when we were there, we met a guy named Dave O'Shea, who's an actor, a Bermudian, and he had some great stories to tell about veterans. And today happens to be Remembrance Day, or as people in the US call it, Veterans Day. So I was able to catch him for an interview during the Remembrance Day Parade, which is intimate, especially for someone like Dave O'Shea, who has interviewed many of these veterans. Can you tell us your, about your dad's interview, the story that he would tell you? Oh, he, he told me a story about getting lost on the Siegfried Line. What happened is, he was a radio man, he got, he was in, um, this December 1944, he'd been wounded outside the city medicine. And he just had recovered, and what I didn't realize at the time, he had a chance to go back. And he said, and I didn't know what this meant at the time, for years, he said, I prefer, I prefer to go back with my friends. And when I would tell that to his infantry buddies, they would go, <coughs> they would do this grunt, and I thought, that's interesting. And then I remember, I realized it was a, a grunt of approval. Hmm. Like, good man. So he goes back, they put him on the front, they say to him, I'll go to the front line, which is house to house fighting, like a saving private Ryan. They do this thing called mouse hole, where they blow a hole in one wall with a bazooka and then they crawl through it. And the Germans are upstairs and try to clear them out. And then the Germans are across the street. It's, it's much like this. Shit, it's just like this. A street about this wide, Germans are upstairs, you're in here, you have to clear them out, you blow a hole in there, and then you try to fight, and they try to jump off the roof to get out of there. So it's like this, and the Germans are across the street, so he's a radio man, and he's from Ohio, from Cincinnati, Ohio, so he's there. And they say to him, go up to the front line. So they say, go up to the front line, you'll get to a crossroads, and then you'll make a left. So on the front, on the way up to the front line, he sees a friend of his, Bolo Davis. And Bolo Davis is named that because if you shoot at targets and you miss, you get a bolo. So I guess this guy was a bad shot. So he said, Bolo, get up. There's shelling all around. It's cold night, there's shelling. He's on the road by himself. And he said, Dave, Bolo couldn't move because he was shot in the head. He's dead as a doornail. And he said, and that addled me. Rattled me. So he gets to the crossroad and he goes the wrong way. And he goes into enemy territory and it's so cold that that's what saves him. It's so cold, he goes into a house to get out of the cold. He gets into a village called Fraulart. Um, and he thinks, oh, I'm, I'm, I better get out. And he hears some voices in the, in the basement. And he listens to them, and they're all chirping. He thinks, oh, 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 so he runs out. And the Red Cross was allowed to take the vehicles around. So the Red Cross is driving with a lorry of dead bodies. This is something from World War II people always say. They won't, they'll say the bodies were stacked like cordwood. That's like, that's as common as raining cats and dogs, stacked like cordwood. And so they're stacked like cordwood, and the guy says, my father says, I'm an American. And I said, he said, you're a stupid son of a bitch. This is enemy territory. He says, get in. So he rides back to camp on this, um, on the dead bodies, and they drop them off. His sergeant Alfaro says, Meyer, I thought you were dead. He says, we report, reported you to MIA. He says, next time we're gonna send you out, we're gonna send you back tomorrow, we're gonna send you a guide. In other words, don't get lost, just stupid. So growing up, I hear this story, I think, oh, you got lost, just stupid. But then I realized, after listening to the stories, that that these people hold a lot. I'll ask them, when's the last time you dreamed of it? And one out of five will say, last night.